Welcome to New York City, and we're in Stytown right now, my new home base. So this is kind of like my backyard community. There's lots of things to do around here, but today we're going to talk about the original VZ dot print head. And we're going to show you how to build it. So this is the point in time where you and me split ways. Well, not in the metaphorical way, but in a way that I have a different hot end that you have. You have a different texture than I have, but they all do the same function. Meaning, I'm using a mellow, crazy hot end, which goes to 500 degrees. You may have a Dragon, you may have a Goliath, you may have a V6. So the difference is, is how you mount them, either uh, with a V slot or direct mount, or you know the size, the height. So you have to find the parts for that. Okay, here's the thing. If you're not gonna be printing ABS, you will be printing mostly PLA parts, you can get away with the SEL 3D printed parts for the original VZBot printhead. But if you're planning on building more high temperature things like carbon fiber, ABS, and things like that, you want to have an enclosure to keep everything nice and warm and cozy. And that's where the aluminum head exceeds that because it's going to be lighter. It's going to be a lot more resistant to heat because it will not warp, bend, or break. It should last you a lifetime until there's a new design out or something better. But right now, I highly recommend supporting Simon and his stuff that he's working on. And if you don't want to buy a part, you know, you can slip him a couple bucks. Now, the reason I'm using 3D printed parts instead of going for the aluminum part was because I want to show you the cheapest built first, and then later on, I'll add. You don't have to get every single piece at one time. You can build it and switch parts out as you go, especially if your finances are kind of low. Okay, so this will all work. The aluminum part's gonna be better, but the plastic will work just as fine. At least it'll get you started. Does the original VZBot printhead have a manual on how to build it? Not really. There is a photograph of what it looks like built in the manual, but it doesn't show you how to build it, and you can't really see clearly because it's all black. But I'm gonna show you how to overcome that and how I built it so you can see how it was made, and that's the whole point of this video. I was trying to be slick, and I was trying to grab the VZBot print print head stuff, all the files for that. And I said, you know what? Uh, the EVA has some new updated files. Let me see if I combine the best of both worlds. Well, that doesn't work out too good because uh, it's designed for a different system than how we have ours set up and it's gonna add more to the confusion. So whatever you do, don't do that. All right, so let's assemble the VZ bar printer head. Let's go. Okay, so this is the third time I've tried uh, doing this video. And this part of the video is showing you how to connect your extruder with your hot end. The reason why it's taking so long, well, a couple of things, is that I shot it twice already. The first one would have been really, really long. Didn't like it. The second video had some te technical difficulties. I decided to do it one more time because it's much easier than trying to edit it. I'm going to try and do this all in one shot. And normally I do voiceovers. This time I'm doing everything, shall we say, live. So as I build, I will be talking instead of me building it and then talking afterwards. All right, so I have uh, this extrude over here. This is the Bond Tech. This is the Light LGX. And I've got this extruder, which is the one from Mellow. It's one of those crazy hot ends, as they call them. And what we're gonna try and do today, as I said before, is not going to be the same. What I do is what you're gonna do because you may have a different extruder, you may have a different hot end, you may have a lot of things that are different than what I have. So we're gonna try and do this as simple as possible and try and explain certain things as we go. You're gonna start with, I would say, I guess the back plate. I already put um, two screws over here just to start it off. But you have to be careful because I hope you can do what I did and print up a bunch of parts and they get confused what belongs to what. Uh, what I had done here was I thought I can get the best of the EV print heads and combine them with the VZ bots. And then I printed some other VZ bot parts uh, that didn't really quite fit. I'll give you an example over here. Certain parts look kind of similar, but they're not. For instance, this part over here is supposed to be this part over here. As you can see, totally different. Okay, it's a little thicker, um, different hole mounts and things like that. 
the cable management part. It's kind of built into this uh, back plate. This, you have to screw it on with this and then a second part afterwards like this. Well, not the same. So this part is definitely not the same as this part. Okay, so that was no good. Certain things look similar to each other, but they weren't. For instance, like this is where the hot end gets mounted on. And if you notice, eh, you know, at a glance here, maybe, you know, if you don't know what you're doing uh, for the first time, you may think this will work until you start trying to put it together onto your mount, it is not gonna work. So with top sofa sides, these are for something else, okay? Then you have your back ends. Uh, these are two, for some reason, I printed twice. But if you look at the one I have here, that is correct, uh, except for one thing. Do you see it? Okay, if you look at over here, there's a part for a belt. This does not have that. Okay, so slight little differences that you'll think, okay, that may work. And you know what? This may work. Let me see if we can line up the holes. And technically, this will line up and then be kind of cool, uh, possibly. But I'm going to stick with this one for now. And we'll deal with it later. Okay, so let's toss this back in the bag. These old parts here. Another thing I'm going to watch out for, too, is supports. These look a lot different than the ones I'm using right now. Again, if you didn't know any better, you would think like, okay, that should work fine, but it's not. Different heights, different shapes. Okay, sideways, cut it. All right, so let's start with the belt. Let me put this stuff away. Oh, by the way, this is one of the parts for the uh, grip to hold the belt. It goes right over here but we're not using this one right now, so let's cross this aside. And I'm gonna show you one more thing in a minute. And as I said before, you know, what I built is not gonna be the same as you built. Also, there's all sorts of interfaces that look exactly the same. They may have a different wing or whatever, but you know, that's up to you to figure out if you wanna use those or not. There's another part I wanna show you too that I've been working on. Uh, my friend Greg designed this and it's really super cool. And he's on the uh, VZBot uh, Facebook forum. Um, super cool guy. He is from Poland. This is made out of a uh, tube. And I think this is 35 by 35 square. The problem is I could not find this in America because it's metrics. And the way this works is, and he designed, was that you have these little plates that would go over the parts. You drill the holes and you draw a line, you know, for the parts you need to cut out and you cut it out. So you drill holes and then you cut out the parts that you don't need. Two holes, drill, drill, draw all these little holes out. And then you can, once you do that, you'll have a bunch of holes over here. So you can just either use some sort of saw, file, or you can put your drill bits in there and kind of bend it until, you know, I guess loose. And then there's a lot of filing afterwards. I'll show you some clips on how I did it a little bit. It's, you know, it's kind of hard, not hard, but it just took some time. It's not perfect because it's all done by hand. I'm not a CNC machine. This is super light and I kind of like it and I might use this later on. But in the meantime, I'm gonna show you how to build this part here. Okay, so um, is this tricky? I don't know, let's find out. And let's put these parts together here. It can be a little complicated if you don't have the blueprints and the blueprints uh, aren't very good. There's no real manual. And if you look at the video over here, you can see what I did in order to figure certain things out and where, what goes where. Because if you go into the manual, all it shows you is the uh, completed build of the print head, but it looks pretty much black. And what I had to do was go into Photoshop and, you know, uh, make it look a little better by boosting the contrast and the brightness on it. And, you know, uh, I was able to see the different parts. The first thing we got to do here is I have some screws. Oh, always make sure 
if there's anything that calls calls for a nut, like these corners over here, you want to make sure you have a nut in there. So check everything very carefully because every single um, hole has a purpose. Every single nut has a purpose. Over here, over here I had some. Actually, I need one over there. But I'll do that later on because I don't need it right now. And I don't want to leave the camera. So, all right, so over here, we have the fan. So we put the fan in here. And it's only about two screw sizes that you need to make this work. Um, a little bit, once you get it lined up. There, that's lined up. You pinch it down, you drop the screw in there, give it a couple of twists with your fingers. And then I'm using a 2.5 millimeter uh, screwdriver. Most of the screws here are 2.5 millimeters. Okay, so now that's in, in place right here. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get the mount. And I'm gonna put this mount on the bottom. And I just have to remember which way it goes. This goes over that. So that's good. And then we put this one in here. I should get my electric screwdriver, make things a little quicker here. Okay, so once that goes in there, you can see over here, there's things with zip ties. I don't really know what that's for yet. Uh, I'm sure it'll come to play soon enough. And then um, your blower will go over here. And your blower has two nuts. And we just turn these up in here. I'm gonna probably speed this up in the video a little bit so you know, save some time. So this is the bottom part. Okay, so now we gotta go and I guess we're gonna mount the front piece now. It could be a certain order of doing it, maybe doing it in the wrong order, but let's see now. This goes in. One bolt, two bolt, and it goes into the back holes over here and over here. So these are the long bolts. Yeah, so anyway, while I'm doing this here, I'll talk to you a little bit about what's been going on. Um, I went to England and oh, this nut is coming out. I'm gonna have to pinch it down with my thumb into place. And um, while I was out there, I thought I was gonna do some intros uh, for the video over there but that did not happen. Um, the weather was raining every day. I was in the middle of the countryside, not much to do out there. Um, and the video that I did take was horrible. So- Happy New Year. No I'm in the UK right now in the countryside. That has anything to do with this part of the belt that is useful. But okay, so now that's the bottom part of it, okay? You've got that, that. So now what we need to do is uh, mount this onto the rail. Okay, so in order to mount it to the rail, we need the top part, which is this over here. Now I'm trying to remember, does it go which way? Uh, There's a certain order where it goes into. Is it that or is it this way? I'm thinking is this way here, and that's what she wrote. Okay, so I'm gonna say this is gonna be for cable management, 
and, and things of that nature. So we're gonna put that on this side over here. And the way we mount that is, again, there are one, two um, mounted uh, nuts over here, the M3 nuts. These are M3 screws, but I'm using, for some reason, is using a M2 socket. I don't know. All right, so let me find some bolts for this. And I know how to find the bolts. Here they are. Ah, and what this is gonna be too is also the support for the extruder. So I'm gonna put these two long bolts across. It's kind of hard to see and look at the cameras to make sure I've got everything in focus over here. You know, when you're doing these videos, it takes forever. As you can tell by my videos, how long I've been doing this same build. But in my case, I've been really, really, really busy. I just shot some off-Broadway things for Matilda. And um, I've got a new setup over here, a new place. I've got new equipment. I want to do really, you know, better videos for you guys. I want to make sure that this is correct over here. And I think I've got this upside down. So I'm going to flip this around. I, this has to go the other way around. Okay. This is the support for the extruder. The extruder is going to sit on top of this part over here. And it has to be on the flat side facing up. So that was my bad right there. So you almost caught a mistake I made. I did make the mistake, but, you know, I caught it just in time before it was too late. All right. So let me tighten this one up. And then this other bolt over here. What I should be doing is I should be using thread lock. But I'm not going to, as I said before, I may be switching this up pretty soon to use Greg's aluminum extruder. But I'm building this so you guys know. And as we speak right now, there's actually a new version of this. Um, I haven't tried it. I'm not really sure if it has all the things for all the... Um, extruders and hot ends yet because I only saw about three and mine was not on the list which is the LGX light all right so now we're gonna mount this four holes in here now they're a little wide so it should be pretty easy to do all right so you have to visually kind of look for them and you can see them. They're going to look like kind of little googly eyed. Uh, but I suggest you start with one screw and mount it in there somehow. And just get one in. Because there's a lot of pieces, if you do it wrong, will not fit. So once you get the first one in, you're gonna be good. All right, so I got one. Twist and adjust a little bit until I see what I want. I'm gonna make that a little bit looser because I don't see what I want. And I'm gonna push it up a little bit. There. And now I can see the other one. So let me get another screw. What I'm gonna do is you wanna do kitty corner. So if you do one over here, you wanna do one in the opposite corner. So you have a better chance of no failures. And I'm making everything kind of loose and I'll straighten it out once I've got all the screws in. So we've got that in there. Screw number three. And then I'm putting in screw number four. And there you go. Right there it is. Anyway, so other things have been going on too is uh, I've been dodging people and avoiding people for the past few years as not to get COVID. And I was in England, I was fine. I got back to New York and within the first week I was back, I wasn't feeling too good. Guess what I got? COVID. 
Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely not a fun thing, you know, and I've been vaccinated, thank God. You know, I also could be, you know, dead at my age. Anyway, so I got these four screws in here. Yeah, and I was in England for about a month too, so. That's where there's a lot of um, things not really happening so much, but you know, it was relaxing, I had a good time. I do have a 3D printer out there. I was working on that. It was not a VZ bot, it was a straight trunk seat, but I had a lot of modifications and I wanted to get that going. And they looked pretty good. All right, so you've got this here. Now let's get to the extruder part over here. Uh, at one point I was trying to screw these screws in. Uh, there's four screws, all right? And I was trying to screw the screws in and I thought, okay, it's not, it's not catching, it's not catching. For about five minutes, I'm trying, you know, get longer screws because I'm thinking maybe the threads are higher up or, you know, I need to reach it with the longer screws or something was wrong. Maybe it's the wrong screw, maybe it's too thin or too thick because it's not catching. Well, it turns out if you get a bond tag, you have to open these up and you have to mount the screws. I might as well show you what that looks like since I'm here. So you know everything about this thing here. So there's little slots in here where I don't know why they didn't put this, uh, the nuts in there, but they opted for you to do it and not them, okay? So you take those two screws out and then you open this up gently. Okay. And you see right over here, you have to pop the screws in to those slots and then um, you're good to go. And uh, there's some others that I did not do, but I don't need them because uh, the configuration doesn't really call for it. So I'm going to skip that, all right? So I'm just gonna put this back on again. And now you know everything I know. Let me tighten these up again here. So yeah, I was in England for about like, um, oops. I gotta get that back plate on. I was in England for about almost a month and uh, it rained pretty much every single day I was out there, every day. If it wasn't raining, it was blowing. It didn't really snow out there. It wasn't that pleasant. You know, it's, it's England. It's always like that every Christmas. I got back on the 5th. Check this out, make sure it works, okay. All right, so now I'm going to Put this on top and you'll see there are one two three holes here one two three one is for the ptf that goes in here i'm going to put this one in here like so actually, i actually want to put the other way around okay and then this goes in like that and your extruder is going to go over here. And I know I'm probably missing a step over here because I want to make sure I get this extruder right. Uh, let me check my extruder. Where's my extruder at? Okay, so I'm going to put this extruder uh, into the PTF before I put the bond tech on. Let me take, push this out first real quick. We'll put that in a minute. Okay. So there's one thing you have to remember. You have to put the mount for the support. Because these two holes here go over here. And then... We need this thing to go someplace like here. I'm trying to remember how that goes. Uh, okay, I, okay, it goes like this. Okay, so now the flat part goes against here and it slots in. And you're gonna turn that, make sure it's tight. There's a nut behind there, so it's not gonna crack the plastic. So now that gives this piece some sort of support except am 
I missing a piece over here? Okay, so, all right, so now that we got this mounted, so the way she have more clarity, what's going on? Nothing to distract you, you need to get in my hands. Okay, so now we're gonna go for this. This is the mount for the hot end. And again, it has nut, nut, and then the screws, and then one, two screws, okay? So these one, two screws are gonna go in here, because this should fit in here. So once they start screwing this in, it fits into place. You see that? So now I can screw this in. Okay, now I can feel it. I'm gonna tighten it. Okay, that's tight. All right, so that's how this part goes. All right, so now we're gonna take this and slide it. onto here. Okay. So technically these holes should line up and it should be butt up against this. I'm just gonna use the M2 top. Why do they call it M2 when the screw is actually the M3? I guess it must be the hole. Okay. So that's in like Flint, and um, something fell out. So I didn't notice that. Good thing I saw that right now. So I'm gonna have to open this up and figure out what the hell this goes. This is so. I guess when I was showing you that, am I gonna have to go get the manual for this now? Take the screw out. This is, I can tell you right now, this is gonna be one of those things where like, I'm about to look, look it up. Uh, the things I do for you guys. All right, so that's the piece over there. All right, I have no idea. And I'm sure you guys, hey, where they go? it goes right over there. What do we? No, I don't know where this goes. So, um, just not go there. So I'm gonna put this back on this side over here. Maybe it's on this side over here. All right, so I'll be back in a second. I'm gonna go check something out. Okay, this piece, gotta keep everything intact over here. All right, so this piece, what it does is it goes over the gears and over the latch. So it can pull the tension Like that, okay? So once you got that, like so, you put the cover back on. And make it tight. Good thing, you know, a lot of these mines are very accessible online. Makes life so much easier. Okay, so now that's locked up. Make sure the gear is working. Can you hear that? Yep. Good, good, good. Got two screws over here. Uh, I'm gonna take this, and this goes flat against. Okay, we got a movie store over here. Thank you, cat. Uh, I was wondering when you're gonna make your appearance. Okay, so that goes in like that. It doesn't go all the way in. You can see there's a, lip, a little bit of a lip in here. So just push that in as far as it goes and then push this against it and 
We'll put these two screws Cat, no. Really, cat? Oh, you turn, you just stay right over here. How's that? You stay there, and I'll build this over here. Okay, so now. Yeah, he's being very, very, very helpful. Okay, so this is tight. This is tight. We don't want any wobbliness. Is that a word? Wobbliness. Okay. I'm putting my headphones on. Make sure. Okay. Uh, cat, can you please go over there for a second? I'm not kicking you off. Don't worry. Okay. So, I'm going to put this back into place over here. Now, I didn't have my headphones on, so I didn't realize the camera that has the audio was not rolling. And I had finished the whole project, starting from where we just started right now, from that gear. So I had to take everything apart uh, and restart everything because there would have been no audio. Okay, so now this is going to go over here. Um, this is going to go right over here. And we have, make sure these are tight. Yeah, and they only had um, ooh, two cameras rolling the first one. It's really hard trying to keep track of three cameras rolling. I don't know why, but it is. I gotta put this screw back in. Let me do it the fast way. Okay. okay. Put the other one in. Making sure this is even because you don't want to crack anything by getting too hard. And what I'll probably do is I'll do the final hand tightening by hand. There. Okay, so that goes there. This is uh, now mounted. You have your hot end, you have your fan mount. And now I just have to put this on top and then line up the two long bolts, which are here. And I'm holding it down with my finger so it stays in the hole so I can turn the screw and um, the hexagon hole will hold the thing in place. Do the same with the second one. Make sure they're even. Good. All right, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm gonna take this. This is the, be a touch mount. Put the screws in, put them aside the over here. We should talk in the community group about, you know, what you guys want to see, what kind of builds. Um, talk about some other products I have in mind. 
so if you like those ideas, I'm just checking right now, making sure everything looks level. Am I going to put the wires in? All right, so I could put the the mister here and um, the heater over here. The only thing left I have is deciding if I want to put this fan on or this fan on. If I put this fan on, if I put this fan on, I gotta figure this is a three pin fan versus a two pin, right? And then like this, I also too have to extend these wires. So, let me, I mean, it's a pretty easy swap. If it doesn't work, I can always swap it out later on. Uh, I'm gonna go look that up in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this fan on because I like the Noctuas. These are much, much more quieter fans than these little noisy buggers, okay? So let's do that. That'll make it super exciting. I don't know how a fan can get exciting, but you know, it's different. They also have these little rubber dampeners uh, so they don't vibrate and make a buzzing sound. And they also come with these type of mounts, which I'm not going to uh, use, but these are little, you know, uh, dampeners. And um, yeah, no. Uh, they're a pain in the butt to get out, you know, you know. For this, I think I'll be fine because they already have rubber corners. And let me put this mount on. And Three holes, three holes. Who's fourth screw? Yeah, I can feel that little rubber cushion between um, the fan plate. in other ones in okay that's good that's in for sure for sure that's tight that's good okay and that is it this is the full belt. I'm not putting this fan in right now because um, I found a broken wire on it. So I have to get a replacement, but yeah, that's pretty easy. Or I can just basically re-solder that onto that, uh, that point right there. And can you see that? Yeah, it's an easy thing, but I'm not gonna do that on camera. It's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. And that's about it. So it looks pretty good, you know. Doesn't feel too heavy, but you know, if you see this later on, don't say what happened because you know, I want to try this out eventually. Mount some of this stuff over here. It'll be a lot lighter and there'll be less chance of uh, melting. I'm not so worried about, you know, the motor mounts and things like that because my case is not enclosed, but when you got high temperatures around your nozzle, that I get a little worried about because things start to flex a little bit, you know, depending on what you're doing and shaking and whatever. And uh, this seems a lot more stiffer. So if you see this later on, this is Greg's design. And uh, I'll talk to him about, you know, we'll find out when he's gonna release this or not. The next step after this is going to be belting up and doing the wiring. And then we're pretty much it. And then after that, I'll do some software configurations and go over that with you. And, and then I'll be able to print with this machine. Yeah, it's getting a little windy over here. 